Stakeholders sensitized on response to oil spills and massive infrastructural works in Leguan and Wakenham. This is InfoHub for Tuesday, September 17. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure has advised that certain sections of Georgetown are currently flooded after a heavy downpour today. The situation is compounded by the afternoon high tide, which requires drainage sluices to be closed. The Infrastructure Ministry will operate irrigation pumps during this period and wishes to advise citizens to take precautions as it will take some time longer than usual for the water to recede. On Monday, stakeholders in the oil and gas industry engaged in an exercise to enhance the capacity for Guyana and regional countries in the Southern Caribbean to support environmentally and operationally safe development of the new oil fields. The Director of the Department of Energy, Dr. Mark Bainu, addressed that conference. Stakeholders in the industry were reminded that while still in its infancy stage, the industry is truly on an upward trajectory. He also noted that oil and gas companies are now faced with the challenge of meeting the world's expanding energy demands while minimizing the negative outside factors associated with these operations. He said while there are both international and national regulations regarding best practices, many of the risks the oil companies will face are site-specific requiring detailed background research and precautionary measures that cannot be solved using a generalized framework. It is within this context that the need to address these concerns that oil and gas companies must develop and inculcate a risk management system and ethos and operational practices to minimize harmful environmental impacts and incidents. Dr. Bino said this can be achieved through placing environmental concerns into all aspects of daily operations and utilizing the most appropriate technology, which allows companies to achieve socially beneficial outcomes while avoiding potential disasters and more stringent legislation. He added that combating environmental issues through foreign and domestic legislation has been met with limited success in major jurisdictions, but tend to be most successful where environmental risks are explicitly embedded in daily operations. The combination of international and national regulations with internal risk management approaches may prove to mitigate the negative externalities associated with oil and gas activities. While one approach has not proven to be stringent enough on its own, the combination of environmental risk management frameworks may be sufficient. Monday's session aimed at expanding dialogue among stakeholders when it comes to common territories with active offshore exploration and production programs. Felicia Valenzuela, InfoHub. As Guyana continues to extend its support to the Bahamas following Hurricane Dorian's devastating blow to that country, Director General of the Civil Defense Commission spoke about upcoming steps to be taken to assist that country. Right now they're looking for someone to head the team that is work, that's going to work directly with the permanent secretary uh, in, in, the, in, the, in Bahamas that has responsibility for disaster management, more of a technical advisor. So they've reached out to, to me, um, looking at my availability, or if I could identify a suitable person. One that person to identify, um, that person will deploy before the end of this week. This comment came after the Hindu Dharmic Sabha handed over $200,000 to the Civil Defense Commission to aid in the relief effort. The CDC is also prepared to send a volunteer and staff to support the CARICOM Operations Support Team that will be working on the ground in the Bahamas. Craig said the Guyana Defense Force will also play a part to support the country and the Commission will continue to monitor the situation on the ground to determine how Guyana can play its role in the global mission. In relation to the Guyanese family that returned home, the DG offered an update. We were living in them before they moved to Bahamas about seven years ago. Uh, we in contact with their family, uh, so we have, we've made arrangements for Trans Guyana. Um, they're providing flight free of course to take back the entire family to them, and then they will 
meet with the, the relatives and then we will be continue we'll be keeping in contact with them. Shaquille Bourne, Farin Fohab. With the construction of several sea defense projects, the structural integrity of Leguan's shoreline continues to be strengthened. On a recent visit to the Essequibo Island, Shaquille Bourne checked out two of these projects spearheaded by the Ministry of Public Infrastructure. We're about four miles from Uniform here in Cane Garden on Leguan. About 150 meters of riprap structure is currently being constructed. At 80% complete and only 17 meters of work remaining, Ranger within the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Suku Jetu, told us about the purpose of the project. This project entails the protection of the sea defense water entering the inland, the agriculture areas, from damaging rice farmers and poultry farmers, you know, cash crop farmer crops. The sea defense in Cane Garden borders a canal that separates the earthen embankment from farmlands. Rahmat Hussein, a farmer in the area, recalled the losses he experienced due to poor sea defenses on the island and signaled his support for the project that will protect his livelihood. We had a terrible flood a couple of morning, we had damage of hose the water, and thousands of water and damage and pumpkin and so forth, you know. So this is gonna be good to help the farmers and me, you know. According to Region 3 Regional Engineer within the Public Infrastructure Ministry, Sinarim Nandram, a sea defense breach spanning one kilometer along the earthen embankment occurred in 2010. This event led to the execution of emergency works. Nandram noted that in 2015, the government began to upgrade the boulder face structures that were there with riprap sea defense structure. Over in Elizabeth Ann, the $9 million sea defense project began recently and entails the construction of a concrete crest wall to replace the failed concrete structure. Shaquille Bourne, Fern for Hub. Still in infrastructure, the residents of Wakenham in Region 3 have welcomed a massive road rehabilitation project that sees them moving from potholes to smoother rides. It's very good to me because the first week when I turn out, the Monday I had a puncture, the Tuesday I had a puncture, I had to purchase the tire and the tube. And having an asphalt road right now, it's lovely because I leave home now at 8 o'clock and by 8.20 I am at school. That was headmistress of Mariah's Pleasure Primary School, who commended the $60 million roadworks ongoing on the Essequibo Island. Before the road upgrades, Retmeyer explained it took her 45 minutes to get to school as the roads were filled with huge potholes. It had a lot of holes. And you have to be very careful, especially rainy season, the road does be flooded. You know, and if you do not know the road, you would find yourself getting into serious accident. The island has now taken a 360 degree turn for the better, and residents Bibi Razak and Ken Biswa are related. And for the three years that I've been using the road, um, it has been in a very deplorable, deteriorating, dangerous condition. And at present now, it has been very much improved. We have better roads, asphalt roads, and I'm finding it very nice to ride on it. I'm feeling good, yes, this road perfect, man. It belonged before, yeah, the road was very bad. The school picture can't go to school. So now we thank the Ranger government for this road. The road is very, very good for everyone, not one man alone, everybody. Aside from having immensely better roads, close to a dozen persons on the island also benefited from employment opportunities with the project. Of the four miles of road to be rehabilitated, two miles have been completed and the other half is on schedule to be completed early October. Isaiah Braffitt for Info Hub. Still to come, early childhood education centers enhancing the delivery of early education. Details after the break. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. 
So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Diana. Thanks for staying with us. As we continue our focus on Education Month, we bring you a special report on one of the recently opened education facilities that is making waves. Today we highlight the Early Childhood Education Center in Lenora. For many young working families, it can often be quite difficult and costly to find institutions to cater to their young children. For that purpose, the government has established the Early Educational Center to give their children a head start at absolutely no cost to the parents. I think this is a very good initiative because it actually gives young couples a chance to like go out and, and work instead of the wife, which is the norm. She has to be at home looking after the kids in the house. So I think this is a good initiative to actually give young people a chance to explore and develop a career. The Lenora Center opened on the 17th of June and was filled to capacity as persons were eager to get their children on board for an early education. The facility has classrooms, a sleeping area, sick bay, a staff room, an administrative area, storage spaces, a kitchenette, a laundry room, sanitary facilities and an outdoor play area for the children. At present we have 48. I went over the number because we have to stick at 45. But then it was so pressing. Parents are just bombarding me, you know. Everybody had a situation and I overstepped my boundary by three pupils. <laughs> I think it's a good initiative, but more centers are needed in the country, especially on the West Bank of Demerara and West Coast of Demerara. The center was established through a collaboration between the Basic Needs Trust Fund and the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Youth Empowerment Unit. Similar facilities are set to be built across the country, with the goal being one in every region and multiple ones where necessary. Before we leave, we were greeted by our grandfather, who is perhaps the most grateful for this initiative. This center here is for help people like me who didn't have much recourse. And it is a helpful situation right now. And I have another grandchildren, but they don't have space. So I think if they could make some more spaces for some more children, because right now it's like it's too small. So the other grandchildren can't go to school because of this financial situation. I had, um, I cannot able to pay that 5,000 on the other board to get them on school. Reporting for InfoHub, Nicosi Bruce. The Ministry of Communities 3G's program earlier today handed over a check for $1 million to STEM Guyana to cover their participation at the 2019 First Global Robotic. The check was handed over by Minister within the Ministry of Communities, the Honorable Annette Ferguson. The contribution will help with the team's one-week trip to the country of Dubai as they will be representing Guyana at the 2019 leg of the first Global Robotic Challenge against 180 countries. In 2017, the team had participated in the first Global Challenge in Washington and placed 10th out of 164 participating countries. Held in Mexico last year, the Guyana team also came out successful. According to team member Paul Glasgow, much is expected in 2019. This year, hopefully, I we're looking forward to like a very good result whereby we can be in the top five. During the handing over ceremony, the Ministry of Communities, through its Green Generation Guyana 3G's program, also sealed a partnership with STEM Guyana to combat solid waste in Guyana. Themed, renew, reduce and recycle, the joint effort will run throughout 2019. Glasgow said the collaboration will see the introduction of new technology to the younger generation to assist in the waste management sector. We have more than 52 clubs across the country where we'll be giving them new, we'll give them different projects every single month, every, well, every week to actually um, look at the various waste management problems that we have in the country and just get the input of our young people as to how they would actually manage, their, manage the waste or to solve these problems. Minister within the Ministry of Communities, the Honorable Annette Ferguson, during the media conference reiterated the government's commitment 
in investing in the nation's young people. The government has already invested heavily in the education of Guyanese and the promotion of youth initiatives. As we believe, this could only, this can only transform or truly transform the social, economic, and political landscape of our nation. Kellen Rover for InfoHub. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages for more stories covering the observances of Indigenous Heritage Month and Education Month. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridging weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.